So I'm making the magpie pre uh, <laughs> pregnancy. No, I'm not. Hello lovelies and welcome to the May 2023 episode of the Not Quite Enough Yarn podcast. My name's Leslie and this is a podcast about knitting, crochet, spinning, sometimes machine knitting, very occasionally weaving, basically yarny stuff, uh, recorded on the south coast of the UK. Thank you for being here, whether you're new or returning, welcome, great to have you here. And thank you to all those who've liked, subscribed, commented. Um, I really love to hear what you think. So there's a brave statement, but thank you for, for all the comments you've made. Uh, I'm going to start off by talking about the Make Along, which runs until the 31st of October. And this is the Craft for Someone Else, Mal. I'm fairly literal with my name, so it's pretty much what you'd expect from that title. Anything that you're making that's for someone else. Now, I've been very impressed that some people have already started their Christmas making. Well done. <laughs> But um, yes, if that's what you're doing and you want to enter the mail, please do so. So it's run on Ravelry. There are two threads. There's a chatter thread and there's a finished object thread. Um, to be eligible for an FO prize, the object does have to be finished, but whips are allowed. So if you've got something that's lurking and this will give you the incentive to, to get it done, by all means do. That would be great. Also, do please put your finished object in the chatter thread so that people can ooh and ah and tell you how wonderful it is and what lovely colours and ask you about it and stuff. Um, there'll be a draw every quarter, so that will be at the end of June and at the end of September. And there are there will be a draw from the chatter thread. That will be a pattern prize up to $15 UA, UA, US and a draw from the finished object thread, which will be a physical prize, a yarn, bag, something of that nature. If you're unable to use Ravelry, please do email your entry through to notquiteenoughyarn at gmail.com and I will add it to the threads on Ravelry. I think that's it for the mail. Yeah, uh, this is called the Not Quite Enough Yarn podcast because I have a lot of yarn, but I rarely have enough to make particularly a garment in all one colour or all one type. So I put together a lot of stripes, blocks, fades. Basically, I'll just add a colour in where I fancy. It stops me getting bored as well. So. So that's that. Now, initially, this podcast started as my attempt to work down the stash. I had two cupboards to start with. That went up to three. And now I've got boxes instead of one of the cupboards. You can see those there. But still a lot of yarn. And I'm still not buying yarn. That doesn't mean it's not being bought for me. I'll come to that shortly. I record vlog style through the month, show you what I'm working on and then put it all together and post on the last weekend of the month. I also do a weekly vlog, which is more kind of life than craft, although I do mention the craft stuff that I'm doing. And that goes up every Friday, uh, about five o'clock UK time. So whatever that is where you are. Those are all the notes. And so now on to the goodies. My himself um, has been away. He's been to Devon. And he had a weekend which we thought it was going to be one set of activities and it turned out not to be. So he thought he'd have a bit of a tour around instead. And when he's doing that, I'm always very keen that he supports the local economy. And so is he. He will go to the local pubs. He will drink the local ale. He will try the local food. And I suggest that he buys the local yarn. He's a good lad. So he went shopping 
And first of all, I think this one uh, is from Oakhampton in Devon. And as I show you this, please forgive. I've got, um, I was dyeing some clothes earlier and I've got a bit of dye on my hands. So it's not transferring to anything, but apologies if my hands look a bit um, ill. But the first yarn he got was from Oakhampton, from the Yarn Hut. And it's a superwash merino, 100% merino DK in the circus colourway. So that's rather fabulous. You can see we've got some variegated pinks on here, some blues, some greens, blues into purples. So that's rather lovely. He then went to um, Wool and Moor, which I think is in... Oh no, apologies, that was in Barnstable. The Woolly Beader is in Oakhampton. And he got me a couple of yarns from there because he's a lovely chap. So the first is a DK. Oh, I'm missing one. Oh, we'll come back to this. What a lucky person I am to have so many that I didn't realise one was missing until I thought, hang on, where's the orange one? So, yes, he went to Oakhampton and bought three from there. Yes. So I'll show you this first one. This is um, so it's from the Woolly Beader in Oakhampton and Wool and Moor is their hand dyed brand. This is called Not Quite the Jubilee. It's 75 percent superwash merino, 25 percent nylon in a DK. And it's showing up pretty well. We've got some lovely sort of burgundy reds in here as long as blue as well as blues, purples, lilacs, mauves. The next one is a four ply and this is called Spring Greens and again it's a 75 25 100 grams and rather lovely and the final one from there the one that I realized was missing is a lace weight yarn it's 100% superwash merino in the sunset colorway so yellows, corals, pinks into reds, very well named and uh, lovely and squishy. Well, he hadn't finished there. I got a message from him saying, uh, I've been yarn shopping. Basically, I'm not going to bother tomorrow. So I'm, I have learned long ago to quit while I'm ahead. So I wasn't going to argue with that. Um, sorry, this one's getting very tangled. That's better. But then he found himself in Exeter, where he went to Wool on the X. And he's said a couple of times, you would really like that yarn shop. So sounds like it's a good one. It's on, I think, 4th Street, which is, I believe is one of the main straight streets in Exeter. But it's at the other end of it to where most activity is. So he tells me if I'm wrong, but it's it's on 4th Street anyway. But one on the X is the name of the shop and also the name of their own hand dyed. So this is Platinum 4-ply. Uh, it's a 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon in the Midwinter Nights colorway, colorway. So again, we've got some lovely burgundies in here and lilacs, but also some lovely greys and greens. So very nice colorway. And the final one that he got me is another lace weight one from Wool on the X and this is Bright Lace which is 50% superwash merino, 50% tensel and this is in the Blood from a Stone colourway and you can just see here we've got some reds in amongst this lovely lilac blue grey sort of colour so that's lovely and being a tensel merino mix it feels absolutely beautiful really soft uh, will have a nice drape to it I'm sure so I have been a very lucky girl and himself has been a very well-behaved husband <laughs> I shouldn't say. sounds like a ruling with a rod of iron obviously I don't but um, no it's, it's very kind of him to go yarn shopping because he could just spend longer in the pub trying the local ale and supporting the local economy that way. But bless him, he doesn't. He goes shopping. He's a 
very kind man and I have some lovely colours to play with but you can see how I end up with uh, a lot of yarn but not enough for a single item and with the best wool in the world I'm not sure how any of these I mean they would go together but they're different weights um, I have an idea for this already I will probably use the lace weights double and use them with some four ply that I have but um, lots of lovely things lots of ideas churning around hello lovelies before I forget I'm wearing my panel jacket this is the first one that I made based on an idea by Carol Lapin or Lapan and it's made of panels hence the name now I normally we said it at the beginning of this podcast but I'll be honest I recorded it a while ago and I can't remember what I said um normally record in sections throughout the month and then put them all together that's not happened this month um <laughs> Just, just not happened this month for various reasons. People who watch the vlog will know that um, just before Christmas, a family member of mine had an accident and ended up in hospital. And they're still there, albeit a different hospital. And they managed to damage their spine. So they're at the National Spinal Injury Centre, which we are so grateful they are there because they're having the absolute best treatment. But it is a slow process. And I'm going to see them every week. And it's kind of nearly three hours to get there, spend a few hours with them, and then two and a half, three hours to come home. So I'm I'm kind of losing a day every week for other things, which more than happy to do, obviously more than happy to go and see them, but it just means that I'm not getting as much done on the crafting side and that kind of thing. That's just the reality. Life throws these things at us. Um, the whole thing could have been an awful lot worse and we are glad that everything is still going in the right direction it's just at the moment taking some of my time we'll live with that so it means this is going to be a relatively short podcast yay they all cry and it also means because i'm recording most of it in one hit i've had to a carry the spare battery for my phone that's why i'm grabbing myself here because it's in this pocket not because um any other reason and i've had to kind of write notes I don't do notes. First of all, <laughs> um, I have been sent some more yarn. And now I'm not going to say any names because I haven't asked the person in question if they're happy for me to mention their name. This is someone I had a an email exchange with uh, a couple of years ago almost and sent them some yarn that I wasn't using, you know, and they've emailed me, let me, written to me rather, let me know how they've got on and sent me this rather lovely ball of yarn and this is Zilana Air and it is 40% cashmere, 40% brush tail possum down and 20% mulberry silk so it is beautifully soft um, and according to the description, ultra soft, durable, pill resistant, interesting, lighter and warmer than 100% cashmere. So that is very pretty. Um, it's coming up a little more kind of towards the ready orange. It's more of a brownie orange. And I think it will go in a project that is in here at the moment. But I'll let you know on that. Uh, I didn't give you a yardage. 175 meters per 25 grams so thank you again to that lovely person very kind of you and on the acquisition of yarn front although this isn't quite the same I've done some spinning this is some superwash merino from witch crafty lady in the pansy colorway Apologies, the light isn't going to be the best in here. Cause but it's a sort of white base with purple and bits of orange as well. So when you spin it, I can show you that bit. You see we've got the orange, the purple. 
I haven't spun for a long time and this is not the most even yarn I've ever spun because I'm out of practice but I am hoping to practice a bit more now just do a little bit every day just kind of 10 minutes or so but I'm pleased to have done this I have not yet soaked it I only finished it only plied it yesterday left it on the bobbins skeined it up today I will soak it um, to set the twist um, as it stands at the moment I believe I have in terms of yardage about 170 meters or in terms of meterage about 170 meters um, I will re-measure that once I've soaked it uh, what I tend to do is I soak it then I re-skein it uh, just so that I know that when I go to use it it will have skeins nicely it won't be all tangled up because I know I've kind of redone it fresh so so I will measure the yardage and meterage at that point but I'm relatively pleased like I say not the smoothest not the most consistent yarn but not bad I split it into three this is a classic three ply and interestingly the third bobbin that I did um, the yarn on there was much finer than the first one so as I was getting back into the habit the yarn was was going a little finer the consistency is the goal here not fineness of yarn but that was kind of the way it was working so I put it into onto three bobbins I split the fibre into three spun each bobbin when I plied them I thought this looks as if there's a lot more yarn on one of them than on some of the others and I ran out of one of the bobbins fairly quickly that was the first one I'd done so it could be that it was the thicker yarn and therefore fewer meters um, but it actually worked quite well I'll show you a picture of the the two bobbins of plied yarn the one with less yarn on it is the one using the woolly winder and that's got cogs so that it um, the yarn is carried smoothly along the length of the bobbin a bit like winding a spool on a, a sewing machine it kind of does it all in a, a smooth way so that you don't have kind of lumps and bumps I had filled that up because those bobbins are actually slightly smaller in capacity than the bobbins that I'd used for the singles and hopefully these photographs will demonstrate what I'm trying rather ineloquently to say. So given that I had a lot of my single left on the third of the three bobbins, I made uh, an Andy and Blace bracelet. So that's uh, a way that you move the yarn. So you're it's putting it into a basically a very simple bit like a center pull ball so that you can pull from the middle and from the outside so that you've got the two strands working together plus the middle bobbin to continue on with the three ply there is always a little bit left and I have a bobbin that I'm putting together of all my oddments don't know what I'm going to do with that um, I may just use it to try different techniques like chain plying um, or I may just put a, a single solid colour bobbin of yarn with it ply them together and have a bit of a scrap ball but here is my spun yarn so hopefully you will see more spun yarn in my future because I'm hoping to do a little bit every day um, it is kind of my happy place I am NOT a very accomplished spinner and I was inspired to get back to the wheel by Marcelin of Hay Brownbury and she is doing a very intentional thoughtful bit of spinning at the moment all the crafting she does is intentional and thoughtful that's one of the reasons why I love listening to her process because I'm much more slapdash and it's nice to see the contrast <laughs> um, so she's trying different techniques and different ways of doing things I just do the same type of method the same method rather and it's laughingly called the inchworm process by some because you just pull out a little bit of fibre and then let it 
spin onto the bob bobbin, put out a little bit, spin onto the bobbin, that kind of thing. But it's my happy place. So though there are an awful lot of techniques that I could learn and can work on, and at some point may well do, I'm not saying never, but at the moment just doing this simple repetitive process is what makes me happy. So there we go. So that is that. Work in progress. I've only really worked on two projects this month and you can see that I haven't done a lot on one of them. So this is the first panel of the Penguono. You can see the marker and you can see what I've done. I'm going to go on to this next because I have finished an item. I have this month a bauble full of ends, <laughs> unlike last month, which was a, a second empty one. But I have all these ends because I have finished. Oh, I'm sitting on it, that's classy. <sighs> we just found the blooper. I've finished my red sweater. Da! I finished this about half an hour ago. I wove the last of the ends in. So it's not blocked. I don't know if I'm going to block it. I think I might just wear it a few times and then wash it because why wouldn't you? It's a top down sweater and this marker, this cheeky little monkey, is where I was last time you saw it. And I think I've done a little bit of the sleeves as well. So I can now remove the marker. I will take some photographs of me wearing this so that you can see it as worn. But this is it. So what is this sweater? I told you I've got notes. This is Floof by Skein Deer, which is uh, a simple top-down sweater with a contiguous shoulder construction. I'll come on to that in a sec. I made the largest size, which is for a 61 inch chest. And modifications. There are always one or two. Um, I made it longer than the original pattern. The pattern is cropped, and that wasn't what I was going for with this thickness of sweater. So, all I did was compared it to one that I was that I regularly wear, which is another Skandia pattern actually, that's the Pure Fuzz. And I took the measurement from the back edge of the neck, so kind of the highest point on the shoulder, down to the hem, got my measurement from there, made this to match. Very simple. Sleeve length made this to fit me and again took a measurement from a sweater I already had in this case the centre back measurement to the cuff and to do this I think I also decreased at a slightly different rate but that's fine um, the collar is the, probably the most of the obvious uh, modifications or the most obvious so I picked up the um, stitches as per the original pattern, but instead of doing a crew neck, I did a two by two rib, did a few rows in the round, just two or three, and then turned at the end of the row to make it a collar. I did this before on my whatever sweater, and I really like wearing it. Uh, when I'm working in my office in the winter, I can get quite chilly around the back of the neck, and this stops that happening. What I did with this is I picked up and did the first few rows in a smaller needle size, but then I moved on to the same needle size as I was using for the body, just to give it a bit more flair. Uh, I didn't make it long enough to fold over, or to stay folded over, but it just gives it a bit more looseness, so that hopefully it will kind of stand up on the back of my neck and then kind of flop down a bit at the front. And because I had the 2x2 two two rib on the collar, I also put a 2x2 two two rib onto the sleeves and a short one 
onto the welt. So those are my modificaciones. So what yarns did I use? Well, I kept the yarn bands as I went along, but not all of them, it seems. So I'll go through the ones I've got. Most of these are double knitting weight. One of these, I think, is possibly a sport weight, but a thick sport. Um, I mean, you can see, if you're looking very closely, that we have a slightly uneven edge where these different yarns are in place. But um, it's not enough for me to worry about. It would block out if I was going to block it. So, in no particular order, Artisano Inca Cloud. Um, I can't actually see a colourway number on here, which makes me think that either something went wrong at the printer or it is so old, it's been in the stash so long that the number has worn out. This is possible. Uh, I started off with that yarn, so that's near the top here. I then used, oh yes, I then used a slightly variegated yarn and that's the red yarn that I used to make a cardigan. This is also a sport weight. I mean, it was initially sold as a DK. I had caked it up and I think it stretched it a little. Um, I've put it through the knitting machine before now, so it, if it's DK, it's fine because otherwise that would have been very difficult to, to do. Um, there wasn't a huge amount of it, so I just put it in. And what I did in all cases, and in some that's more obvious, is I just did a few sort of narrow stripes and then wider stripes as I went down, just to give a slightly random slash faded feel to the striping. That's on the body, sleeves are different. Uh, the next yarn I used was Dial Gilpin Laland, which I think is this one here. So I just stripe that in and then out again. Then I was using Dovestone DK by Bar Ram Yu. And I'm not sure, I think the colourway is number nine. So that's exciting. Oh, the Laland, that's the Jasper colourway. I then had um, Wendy Ramsdale. I didn't write down the colourway name on that, but that was this sort of uh, pinkier red. And then a lot of this was Manos del Uruguay, Manos Silk Blend, which is 30% silk, 70% extra fine merino, kettle dyed. I know that it will pill like nobody's business. Or at least I'll be very surprised if it won't, because it's a very loosely spun yarn and it's just going to peel. But I like it. I like the feel of it. It does feel absolutely lovely. And I was pleased to be able to find this use for it because I had three balls. So that was good to find a use for. And then the last one, the darkest one, is James C. Brett Legacy. Uh, it's double knitting, pure wool. I'm doing 50 gram balls unusually, 128 meters per 50 grams, and it says 100% superwash wool. Doesn't say what variety of wool. Um, it has quite a nice feel to it. It's not, I mean, it's next to the silk blend, so it's not going to feel as soft as that, but it's, it's got quite a nice feel to it. So those are the yarns, I think that's all of them. Now, as I was working my way down the sweater, I did bits of the sleeve and then did a bit more of the body, then a bit of the sleeve, a bit more of the body, uh, because I wanted to use as much of the yarns as I could and just leave very kind of small amounts. So it meant on the sleeves, I've got more regular stripes. So these are kind of five row stripes. So similar sequence of yarns, but not trying to match them. Um, I know some people that would make them feel very uneasy but I am fine with it I really am so 
so we can see we match until I split for the sleeves and then we have a different stripe sequence but the same colours. So I think that is possibly all I have to tell you on that one. Well, I'm rather pleased with it. I um, was beginning to think I wasn't going to get it finished. I thought not only would I have another month with no finished objects, not a race, doesn't matter, but I wouldn't have much to show you apart from this being almost done. And regular viewers will know I always name my podcast after songs and this month it was very nearly almost there. But we can go with Ruby instead because the sweater is done. So that is something that makes me very happy. If a little destructive. So that is done and we'll go into rotation. I might block it, but I probably won't. So what else has been happening? Well, I have launched, I'm making that sound like it's a big thing. I've set up a website for my tech editing business. Uh, I, in November of last year, did um, an introduction to tech editing with the Cool Wall School, which is run by Carol Ibbotson, who's a designer and very well established tech editor. And did the introductory course and then was lucky enough to win a place on the the more advanced course called the Profitable Knitter, which I was delighted to win, obviously. <laughs> it's like, whoo haven't done the crochet one yet, I will. But um, completed the course, it's an online course, uh, has Zoom meetings, I'm not sponsored in this. I mean, although I won that place, I'm not sponsored to talk about it, but I'm just very enthusiastic. Um, so it's online, you can attend live Zoom meetings, but if you're unable to attend them live, they're recorded so you can access them later, see the course material, see what questions other members of the group have asked, that sort of thing. And then there are a number of assignments and at the end you get um, a certificate. Because of busy with my work, but also the situation with the poorly family member, it all kind of slowed up a bit. So where I'd hoped to get the coursework finished very quickly after the three weeks of the, the online material had finished, um, that didn't happen. Just life got in the way on that one. But I finished it, uh, I think about a month ago, got my certificate and have been meaning ever since to kind of get my backside into gear and to get things moving. So I have set up even better patterns. You have a lovely design. Let's make an even better pattern. The problem is with my branding, I'm either online knitting or death, patterns or death seemed a little bit extreme, or I'm not quite enough yarn, distance, not quite enough checking, doesn't sound like the sort of tech editor that you want. So, even better patterns is the direction that I have chosen, and yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, I need to do some marketing really, but this is where we're at. It's a side hustle. I'm not looking at to give up the day job, but it is something that looks very interesting. Um, I let my friends on Facebook know I'd launched this. I said, look, basically it involves knitting and spreadsheets. If you just add chocolate to that mix, you have my idea of heaven. So, so yes, that's, that's what we've got. So evenbetterpatterns.com is another place to find me, should you be looking. And actually I would say that question, should you be looking? Anyway, <laughs> confession time. On the website, I talk about the fact that I know I make mistakes. And, you know, I've had my patterns uh, tech edited in the past and the editor has come up with things where I've just thought, what was I thinking? So I, I make the point that I don't come into this uh, thinking that I'm perfect and I get it right every time, but what I do have are a number of checks and systems in place to to make sure that I pick up those errors. 
And I shouldn't confess to this, but I'm very grateful to my friend Evelyn, who pointed out the, count them, typing grammar errors on my website. I didn't follow my own process. So there's a lesson learned. So if you want an editing pattern edited, let me know. If you want a written piece edited, let me know and I'll pass you on to Evelyn. <laughs> I'm joking, she doesn't offer that service, but I'm very glad that she did to me. So, so yes, lesson learned. Don't rush at things, Leslie. Never works. I know this stuff and it's good to be reminded. I will be more careful and particular and do more checks when I'm editing a pattern, I promise. So what else have we got going on? I'm going to work, I'm thinking of future plans now, I'm going to work on the penguono. The bits of leftover yarn from the red sweater, um, a couple of them have gone into my advent for the end of the year, but there's a few others here and they are going into my penguono box, which is down by this chair, which is my knitting chair. But I have a plan for June. June is Pride Month, and I would say two things to that. Firstly, every day is a rainbow day, as far as I'm concerned. And secondly, we should be supporting people in the LGBTQT plus community at all times of year, not just in June. But I'm going to make a, a Pride sweater. A couple of years ago, I made my uh, crochet boxy in rainbow colours, and I'm making a rainbow item this year. I am going to make, have I got a big picture of it? No. The Magpie Tendency. Now this will be the third magpie that I've made. It's a very quick, easy pattern. It uses four ply or fingering weight yarn, but with large needles. So it's a very quick make. The original sweater is cropped. I will go slightly longer. Although not as long as my second magpie, which is more or less a dress. Um, and I'm doing this in rainbow yarns. And then it occurred to me that it's very possible to kind of rainbow wash stuff to make it look good for Pride Month. And the pattern is by um, Scananigans, uh, Melissa Alexander Loomis. And it says about the designer, Scananigans is a new idea sorry, neurodivergent queer maker who enjoys long blocks of stockinette and fixing mistakes without having to frog. So, out and queer, happy to, to knit her pattern as a pride pattern. The yarns I've chosen, now there's some stranded yarn in here and we know that Jude is part of the LGBTQT plus community. But with the other yarns I've got here, and bear in mind, I'm not buying yarns, so I'm not actively going to, to buy yarns. Um, I don't know if these dyers are part of that community or not. And then it occurred to me, that's partly because it's none of my business. And this is one of the things with, um, with Pride Month, is that we want to support people from the community but we don't necessarily know who they are and there's no reason why we should. People's sexuality is a personal matter. It's up to the individual if they choose to be out or not. So I don't know, apart from Jude, if any of these dyers are LGBTQT+. But they're nice yarns and I'm gonna make them with love and support in my heart uh, which is not the same as paying someone's bills, I know. But I, I, I kind of don't know where else to go with this, given that I am not buying yarn. So that's that's where we're going. And that was very rambly and probably a little bit pathetic. But let's talk about what I'm going to make anyway. So, so I'm making the Magpie Tendency by Scananigans. And I have got four yarns here. And two of them are actually leftovers from the Crochet Boxy. The first yarn that I'm going to use, uh, I think at the 
top, although I may change that, is some hand spun. And this was a combination of some Pride Rolags from Needle and Fred. Needle and Fred, usually a yarn dye, not always um, with fibre in their shop. So um, I know some people in the past have said, are you sure that's where you got them from? Well, yes, I am, but they don't always do them. So um, that may not be an option. And that was spun with some silk lap waste from Witchcrafty Lady of course <laughs> and I used this in the ritual shawl by Marcelin of Hay Brownbury I'll put a picture in here have you noticed that I'm using people's names twice today because we've referred to Marcelin twice we've referred to witchcrafty lady Almas twice this is obviously the theme uh, this is from the Knitting Goddess, who sadly is no longer dying, I believe. And not that this is dyed, this is uh, undyed, but it will be marvellous. This is Blue Moon Socks That Rock. Um, it's showing a little bluer, it's more towards the kind of greens, I think. And this is the jelly bean, uh, jumping jelly beans colourway. And although it's not a strict rainbow, I thought it was a nice rainbow. And I thought it would go. The other uh, yarns I have here are all leftovers from the crochet boxy. And they were two lots of minis, one from Knitting Goddess and the other from Jude of Stranded. And what I've done, what I did was I laid them all out in a rainbow order and then balled them up. Russian joined them, balled them up. I then had to put them on a cake because it's a rainbow. And I just like the prettiness of a rainbow cake. So varying amounts on here um, of the different colours but I will just, the plan is whatever I do at the top and what I'm thinking, oh, see I'm not sure, what I'm thinking is this will probably be at the top so the design has kind of shoulder pieces here and then you work down so that will be this one. Then I will go into, actually I might do a bit of this, then the cream, then the rest of this, and then into the rainbow. So that the bottom half of the sweater will be rainbow stripes. The rest will be more mixed up. So, so that is what I'm going to be working on next month, as well as the penguono. And anything else that comes into my head, because... This is meant to be fun, so if I get a new idea and I want to work on it, I jolly well will. Um, that's probably it for the, the crafting. At the end of June, so whatever the last Saturday is in June, I will be doing the first draw for the make-along. So please do put your entries in or take part in the chatter to be eligible for a prize. Some lovely items going on that thread. Um, a lot of socks, quite a few hats, quite a lot of charity knits, a lot of gifts for family and friends, so some lovely items on there. And yes, I'll be making that draw at the end of June, or the last weekend in June when I put the podcast up. But I think that's it for this month, so thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting this channel, it is much appreciated. And I hope that you're all well. I hope that you are able to do the things that you love doing and that you enjoy your crafting. So take care, everyone. Thanks for being here. See you next Friday uh, for the next vlog or at the end of June for the podcast. Take care. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.